Well, the seed catalogs have all arrived and most of my seed orders are in. Down below this particular video, you'll see my long list once again of the things that I plan to try to grow this year in the garden. I always add a little caveat that uh, some of those things will only be a plant or two grown, so it's not like I'm planting acres and acres here. I'm just going to hit the highlights in this video of a few things that I've never grown before. They're not all that rare or unusual or anything, but things that are new, new to me. The first is this cabbage called Caraflex. As you can see, a pointed, triangular, pyramid, whatever, shaped cabbage. And uh, the seed came from Vessi's, and they describe it as being their sweetest cabbage and the tenderest. Uh, and it's a very early cabbage. So I, one of the three varieties that I'll be growing this year, anyway, is the Caraflex. And I like it because it's going to be early, hopefully. This next one is a Veronica cauliflower, a Romanesco type cauliflower. I don't think I've even seen them in a store here anywhere. I've seen them in catalogs for years, and so I'm going to give it a try. Uh, it remains green when cooked, and as you can see, is a very unusual looking cauliflower. Cauliflower usually being white. Uh, I think the photographs of it are usually a bit deceiving. I'm not certain. I saw a photograph of one sitting in a person's hand, and they are quite small. And the Vessi's catalog, where the seed came from, say that it is best eaten when it is small. So I don't, I'm not looking for it to be a huge cauliflower, and I don't know. Um, I'm so, and you'll probably taste like any other cauliflower, but definitely very different looking. I'm going to try my luck at growing eggplant once again. I like eggplant. I've had success in past years growing it. The last time I tried to grow them was probably about three years ago. Lots of blossoms. I never got a single eggplant all summer. It wasn't this variety. This is a Japanese variety called Shiku, S-H-I-K-O-U, a long, slender type of... Uh, eggplant. And hopefully in the hoop house I will have some success and, and get a few of these to eat this summer. I've always maintained that carrots are supposed to be orange. Last summer I bought a package of the mixed colored carrots and thought, oh, I'll give it a try just for the fun of it. And I opened the top of the packet, and then I managed to get some water drops on it. And I forgot that I'd opened the top. I gave it a shake. My carrot seeds went all over the grass everywhere, so I never did get to try them. In looking for more colored ones this year, I was looking through Johnny's Select Seeds catalog, and these are called satin, white satin. Uh, supposedly a, not a terribly long carrot, like eight inches or so, and very sweet and nice. So me, who always thought carrots had to be orange, is going to try growing a few white carrots this year. I'm not sure if I will grow them in the hoop house or grow them outside and use some row cover or whatever. The few orange carrots that I did manage to grow last year, uh, I had carrot fly maggots, the first time I'd ever had them and most of the carrots had been attacked by them, so I've got to come up with something to protect these white satin carrots. I guess carrying on with my white vegetable theme, last year for the first time I grew the small uh, white purple topped turnips, and I really liked them. I had the same problem, that with well, a similar problem that I had with the carrots, some sort of a worm got into a lot of them, and I don't know if that's how that gets there, that something was in the soil or if something laid an egg on it, so I'm going to have to try to protect my turnips again this year. But anyway, I've been reading a book called The Market Gardener by uh, Jean-Martin Fortier and from Quebec, and uh, he recommends this particular Japanese variety as being the best and the sweetest of turnips that he's ever grown, so I'm going to give it a try. It's Hakuri, H-A-K-U-R-E-I. I 
and I have no idea. I don't speak Japanese, but I probably butchered that name quite badly, but it has an edible top as well as the nice uh, um, sweet turnips. I'm looking forward to growing those this year. The next three, I think, vegetables here are uh, from the Annapolis Seed Company in Nova Scotia. And this one is the North Georgia Candy Roaster Squash. This is not Northern Georgia. However, these are all everything that they sell are heirloom varieties. And supposedly this does very well in our climate. So I'm quite intrigued by it and want to try it. A long, slender squash, which I guess stores quite well as a, as a winter squash as well. So we're going to give that a try along with two or three other kinds of squash this summer. Also from the Annapolis Seed Company is the Crown Pea. This is the third year, not nothing new for me, the third year that I've been growing the Crown Pea. I think I would grow it even if I didn't like the peas. It's such a beautiful plant. It doesn't grow very tall, three, four feet maybe. doesn't need very much su support. And as you can see, it has these pretty pink and white blossoms. And it's called the crown pea because, as you can see, they're in a cluster. They grow in clusters at the top of the plant, uh, several clusters on each plant. But uh, not very many po uh, peas in the pod, just, I don't know, three, four, not, not large pods of peas. Very tasty and sweet, but I grow it just because I'm fascinated by the plant. My third heirloom variety from the Annapolis Seed Company is the Oka Melon. Uh, developed over a century ago by the Trappist monks in Oka, Quebec, and thought to have been extinct until it was discovered a few years ago again. Somebody had been keeping the seeds and carrying on with it, and it has been rediscovered, so I'm looking forward to trying it. What uh, got me thinking about it is the Trappist monks at Oka, Quebec, also are the monks that uh, bred my Chanticleer uh, chicken breed. So I'm now going to try and see what their melon is like. I, I will grow this in the hoop house. I've only ever grown melons, I guess, one year and had reasonable success. My issue with them is that there was a number of melons. They all ripened the same day and they don't store very well, but going to try the oka and see what it's like anyway. And these are asparagus beans, or the yard-long beans. I think of them as being Asian, but I don't know if they actually are or not. Uh, I've never grown them before, something I've seen many uh, YouTube gardeners growing and talking about how good they are, so I'm going to be giving it a try anyway and see if I can grow a few yard-long beans. And this is a purple Savoy type cabbage called Dead On. <laughs> All one word, not hyphenated like I pronounced it. Strange name for a cabbage. Anyway, supposed to be a large, good keeper. Um, a Savoy. I, got, I grew a green Savoy years ago and liked it very much. So I'm going to be giving the Dead On cabbage a try. I absolutely was not going to buy any more tomato <laughs> seeds. I have numerous varieties, seeds left over from last year. One or two varieties that I started the plants and managed to kill the plants last year that I want to try again. And I was not going to buy any more tomatoes. And then the West Coast Seeds Catalog arrived. I, this is a category of tomato that I have never heard of before. Maybe it's been around for a long time, but it is called... Parthenocarpic, P-A-R-T-H-E-N-O-C-A-R-P-I-C, tomatoes. And this particular, everything here is unpronounceable. This particular variety is Silets, S-I-L-E-T-Z. I'll put all that on the screen here anyway. But the thing about uh, Parthenocarpic tomatoes is they do not require pollination to produce a tomato uh, and consequently have very few seeds. Very interesting to see how that works. 
but it's supposed to work better for a short season because uh, they will pollinate themselves, or they don't pollinate, they produce a tomato without pollinating. Uh, so even when it's cold and there aren't any flying insects, they supposedly will set fruit. So I'm giving that a try to see whether it actually works. Last but not least, I'll try to give away a few seeds here for anybody who likes parsnips. Rob, the old gardener guy in Finland, uh, sent me seeds two years ago, several varieties of seed, and the parsnips that he sent were called Guernsey. Um, I planted them that year, 2014. They grew really well. I had a good crop of, of parsnips, really enjoyed them. I left two or three in the garden intentionally over the winter, and they survived and grew again last year, 2015, into very tall, spindly, funny-looking plants, and they bloomed and produced seeds, and I have a lot of seed that I collected. I don't know if they were meant to be an heirloom variety and if they'll come true from seed or not, but I'm going to plant them again this year to see what happens, and if you'd like to give it a try, just send me a personal message with your mailing address, and I'll drop a little packet of these in the mail to you. Well, that concludes this little video, and as I said, the rest of my list is down below. And thank you very much for watching.